Welcome back to another video guys. Today we're going to be replacing the microphone on an Apple Watch. I had a customer send me in their Apple Watch saying that the microphone wasn't working and, uh, and you'll see the process to repair that here in this video. As we get into the settings of the watch, we can check to see that the uh, speakers are working first and that it, it just wasn't having an issue with that. We can also test the microphone to see if it does any type of recordings, if it picks up any sound, and it looks like on this watch we aren't getting any sound as you can see here. Can you hear what I'm saying? Can you hear what I'm saying? So our goal today is going to be to be able to bring back the, the microphone function so that this watch can be fully functional again. These parts do tend to fail over time. Um, most of the time microphones are pretty hardy as far as uh, you know taking substantial damage or anything like that, but sometimes if water can get in there, it can mess with it, and, uh, and there are other reasons that they fail. So the first thing that we have to do is remove the screen. Now this can be tricky because one of the things that you have to do is avoid damaging the display and also da avoid damaging the force touch. The force touch sensor runs around the border of the screen. As long as you can insert a tool correctly and make your way around the edge of the screen properly without uh, messing with the force touch, you should be able to get the screen off without any issue. Now a lot of the time where people go wrong when they're taking apart a watch is they will put too much tension on the flex cables of the screen. It's important that you don't put too much tension when you're separating the screen. Because the solder joints that hold it to the logic board aren't that secure. And it's going to be hard to tell if you've done any damage because of how small those solder joints are apart from where they're located under the battery. In order to replace the microphone, one of the things that we're going to have to do is do a kind of a semi teardown of, of the watch. It's not necessary to remove the logic board from the frame. You can if you'd like. It may help if, you're, if this is your first time doing it. Um, and it's also a good practice just to be able to uh, understand how to break down the device. There are a few nuances to this device that make it a little tricky to tear down because of all of the flex cables that fold over each other. Um, from the external char charging unit, the speaker, and of course um, the other flex cables that, that go into uh, into the device. Now, now if you're if you if this is your first time working on an Apple Watch, I would not recommend attempting this repair um, unless you have experience uh, in micro soldering. Uh, this isn't a repair for the for those that uh, don't do this on a on a daily or a regular basis. One of the trickiest part of part one of the trickiest parts of this repair is extracting the Taptic engine um, uh, to be able to um, remove the the entire flex cable. The uh, the speaker has a flex cable that uh, is is on top of a portion of the Taptic engine frame, and so it makes it a little tricky. And it's a very flexible, very thin cable with, with two solder joints that allow uh, the speaker to work. And so if you accidentally tear that cable, you're going to have to replace the entire speaker. And so you have to be very careful in removing that by desoldering those two joints. Now, flex cables, uh, flex cables like the one for this microphone, on other devices you can use things like hot air to remove, but because of the size of this logic board and the internals, I would not recommend putting any, any type of additional heat to the logic board to remove any of the flex cables if you're doing any repair. Um, you want to use uh, just, the solder, just the soldering iron tip to remove all flex cables uh, joint by joint. It's tedious but you won't, you, you, the chances that you do any harm to the device are very, very slim. 
Now this video is, is uh, intended to give you the, the gist of the repair, but it is not necessarily an instructional video. I will be putting a more in-depth video of this repair uh, with all the little nuances, little tips and tricks that are going to help make this repair successful on my online course. If you haven't already become a member there, you can visit my website at fixedphones.com and, uh, and sign up for my Apple Watch repair course where I go over every single series of Apple Watch and all the repairs that you'll need to know to be able to repair uh, the watches if that's something that you're interested in doing. Uh, I, do, uh, I do continually update uh, the course as new repairs are available, as new watches come out. Uh, I will be putting some of that content on YouTube, but uh, the more educational, if you're wanting to do this for a business or a, a, side, a side job or even a career, uh, that's where you'll be able to, to, to view that content. Comment below if there's another video or something else you want to see if you have any questions. Feel free to smash the like button if you haven't already. Can you hear me this time? Can you hear me this time? Alright, can you hear me this time? Can you hear me this time? Thank you so much for sticking through to the end of this video. Smash the like button if you haven't already. I, I really appreciate the support. Now all we have to do is turn off the, the watch and get it sealed up and ready to go back to the customer. Worked out just as planned. Thanks for watching.